this season has just obviously not really gotten your guys in way. Is there anything that sticks out of just having some younger and inexperienced guys, or, or is there any big factors you think? Uh, I just think consistency and sustaining. I mean, it's been a problem pretty much the whole year, whether it's been home or away. And, uh, you know, we make improvements in one area, and then we just – and then something else slips, and then we maybe fix that one, and then something else. So just, uh, I think it, you know, you have to be consistent. You got to sustain. You got to be tough. You got to, you know, you got to get the stops at the end. Um, you know, it, it's it's just, you know, and almost every game, <laughs> home or away, except for Kansas, pretty much is, you can look at it, fifty-two to fifty, or forty-nine to forty-eight, or whatever it might be. They all have been pretty much the same, and now. Uh, we got to see if we can uh, get a little bit of consistency from our defense, our offense, and then from individuals that we know we have something here. And it's, you know, it's better late than never. And that's all we can. And that's all we can hope for. Obviously, Texas Tech's loss on on Saturday, pretty tough one considering their three and Oklahoma State was nine. I mean, when when you face teams like that coming off losses like that, do you, do you sense any extra? Well, you would anticipate, and they played in their last home game. They just killed TCU, um, and they 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 play every. You know, you hope most teams play with a better zip at home and shoot the ball better. I mean, just look at TCU. You know, they shot what fifteen percent, and then they make fifteen threes. So, um, you know, every game's different. That's the in a unique thing about our league. TCU had beaten. If I'm right, right, they beat Texas Tech the first time. So every game's different, and you got to play, and uh, ball bounces. But you, you, you know, and I, I still laugh when you asked about the curse thing. You know, it, it's it, you know, and then you know, we just even the other day, Cardi getting hurt after play, actually playing well, and all of a sudden now he gets hurt. So, you know, I, but the curse, it's it, you got to make your own luck, and that's you know your your consistency, your effort, your mindset, your attitude, all those things. Those are things that make the difference. And you know, I, I you know, we keep we keep uh, coaching them, we keep battling, and and hope some good things will come here about as we finish the the season. Mike Davis seems like a great young man. His first double-digit scoring game was against Texas Tech. How has he impressed you the most this season? I, he's been better than I ever thought. And and when I, for the most part, he has been consistent. Now you know you always want a little more. I think you asked that a couple of weeks ago. You know, could you get a little more out of him? And and we'd like it. You know, I, maybe it's going to be next year. I don't know. A little more confidence. Little you know, all that stuff. But. Uh, he has been rock solid, and you know, and you know, could he get a deflection and take a gamble on a steal, or you know, close out a little harder, go offensive rebound? Yeah, there's a lot of things he could do, but um, you know, I, I think overall he's been he's been pretty consistent for us as much as anybody on our team. What's this one got to do to kind of bounce back? I I. I it, you know, I really believe he's got to just worry about what he can control and play hard. When he's played well, what does he do? And he, you know, Alabama eight rebounds, four offensive. You know, getting you know getting a put back here, or there, stealing a basket, uh, stealing the ball. Um, you know, I think a lot of them. You know, I got to do more. And then when they do try to do more, then it they, it gets it gets worse. And you know, he didn't play much the other day because he got some fouls and. Um, then he got back in there and he was going to try to try to make plays. We we have to make plays for each other, and that's and you know some of that's you're, you can do it with hustle plays. Some of it is sharing the basketball. Some of it's understand when you create. It's not always for you. It's for other people also. How do you feel like the, the adversity that Montevius faces this season will benefit him going forward? Oh, I, you know, I all the minutes he got, you know, and everything, and going against the good teams. I mean, there's no doubt it's going to benefit. Now, you know, it's like all our guys coming back. What are they going to do? What did they learn from it? It's, um, you know, it's it, it it's important. What did you learn? And that's that's the biggest thing. And I've asked several of them the last couple of weeks. You know, just like calling them or texting them or just seeing them. You know, what have you learned? 
Now what are you going to do with that? And and that that's going to be you know the key to taking for a guy like him, Dejuan. You know, Dejuan knows he has to get stronger. He's in the weight room on Sunday. The problem is he really needs his legs stronger, and you can't do that right now. You got you know he he's got it. He's got to almost rest his legs if anything. So uh, you know so you know what did you learn? Now what are you going to do with it? And how how bad do you want it? And how bad did it hurt to push yourself to another step a year from now? Oh, you know, I thought, you know, the crazy thing when David and Cardi picked up their pressure against TCU, it gave us a chance. They they both on the play hard chart. It was one of their better ones of the year. Um, you know, he, he just is not very good off the ball. And if you, if you go back, watch TCU tape, first play, second half, lost – Guy drives David's ball watching, boom, backdoor layup, Fuller. You know, just he, he's he got to be more attentive. And, and again, I, you know, I don't want to make excuses for him, but he missed all summer and it took a, it, you know, it took him a long time. He missed a lot of reps. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, he's made up some stride out of it. He's gotten a little better. But now for, you know, he has to sustain it. He's got to fight through fatigue. Uh, you know, on both ends of the court, when they're physically pounding him, when he's bringing it up, still seeing what's there, it's uh, it's you know when you're rushing the quarterback, do you have the poise to still see it and take the hit? You're bringing the ball up, can you see both sides of the court and see who's open? Uh, you know, take that and then and then on the other end, you know, to to fight through screens, to fight, you know, a weak side, be there, all that stuff. That and that that's. You know, it's a, it's conditioning, it's it's toughness, it's it's a lot of that stuff that you know you hope, and that's why you know. And again, he's a junior, but he is in some ways he's a freshman, and and it, and you know he's done some good things, but there's again you know going back to what you you know can he take a step, a major step with all the experience he's got. Is there anything from that last Tech game you guys played that, that you could really say, hey, we need to do this better this time? Um, you know, if you look at it, we turned it over way too much. And but again, they lead the league in steals. They're very good against everybody. They're they're physical. They're aggressive. They take a lot of stuff away. They play a lot of guys. Um, you know, so that you're going to have to deal with that. And then second chance points. I mean, when you look at the stats, we had 20 turnovers. I think it created 30 points. Now they had turnovers, which we got 20 points off. But second chance. Um, uh, you know, was the other point, you know, where, but, you know, they got, they got some good players that can wiggle. They go small ball, they make you help. And then the guys, you know, step up and make plays, offensive rebounds, things like that. We were, we took the lead in the second half. Again, you go back and look, I think it's 49, 48. And, and, you know, then all of a sudden, a couple turnovers, they make a little push. And then it still was, um, uh, I think it was still four or five, and then we lost uh, Moretti, Morietti um, on a three on a little flare screen. Somebody kind of got ball watching, boom, went to eight, and then it was, then that was pretty much over. Um, you know, the nice thing he's for me, I, I just love how he plays Morietti because he makes all the little plays. All the other guys, all game are making plays, but when they need it, he's the guy that seems to step up and make uh, make the big plays. The game winners that that make a difference in the game. Where the offensive solutions lie with with this team? Um, you know, it would be nice to get some uh, some scoring inside. Uh, it would be nice to make some free throws. Uh, those and it, and it seems like and again TCU we we got a little bit in transition. If we can, you know, if we can get those are the the basketball plays would really help us. The basketball plays, the transition, making the right read, the offensive rebounds, uh, making your free throws, you know, making the right pass, uh, you know, when you penetrate. The basketball plays would really help us if we can make some strides. Because, again, you can add up the points. Tom's done it. it. I've seen it in, you know, some of those little stories. You know, if each game, if we could find a way to get four, six, eight more points, a lot of things would be different. You mentioned Moretti. Is are you liking just that pure shooter? Is there somebody that's just? Yeah, I mean that helps, but you got to get open shots, and that that's the thing we, you know, we haven't helped each other get open shots. That's probably the 
You know, like Mike is shooting. Look at his stats. I think it's still 46 from three, but you got to get him shots. And and you know, and and I just again, I think our guys want uh, they want to do well, but they think they every time they touch it, they have to do something, and that's not the case. Uh, you know, sometimes it's the best thing you do is move the ball, cut through. Now you might get it back. And now you can make the play on because they they ball watched or they got lost. Uh, you know, Texas Tech is really, really good, but they still have lost eight games and five in the league, I think it is, or whatever. So they make mistakes too. They got young guys, they make mistakes. Now can you be patient and strong enough to, to make them make mistakes and then make them pay? I know you only start one of them at a time, but having the ability now to maybe use Cardi and yeah, we. I mean, you never know what could happen tomorrow. So um, it, it helps offensively. I'm just not sure defensively. And that's, as a staff, we've been just talking about it, to be honest with you. You know, what it, for the starts of games, do we need better offense or better defense? And, um, you know, that's, I guess that will be our decision on uh, game time tomorrow, whatever time it starts. I don't even know. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Have you ever encountered this before, where those first like three minutes of games have been just such a burden or such a problem? Over? Yeah, I mean it, but it hasn't been totally because you go back some of the, you know, a lot of times it has been. But when actually when Cardi came out of the lineup, we had three or four games where we did have decent, and it wasn't like we were up twelve to nothing, but it was nine to seven. You sustained it. But then it was the next stretch, you know. So, um, you know, and now, you know, but but there has some been really bad starts. There's no doubt about that. The Iowa State, the Baylor, um, you know, I don't TCU. What was it, seven to two or something? I don't something like that. But uh, you know, I yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not sure exactly why, but then. It seems we get a sense of urgency and we get back in the game. A lot of times we take the lead, you know, but then, then we can't sustain it and finish it. Obviously, Bruce, I know you can't play till next year. What are your impressions of Casey then so far in practice? Oh, he's very physical. He gives us an athletic guy. He runs. He plays his butt <laughs> off. Um, you know, high motor. And he's got to get his skills better. There's, there's no doubt. But that's – I mean, we've harped on him – hand-eye coordination, footwork, skills, things like that, uh, which a lot of big guys need. But, um, you know, man, he, he, he will – if you're not ready, you'll, you'll get cold cocked. And by, not on, like by a punch, but by his body or an elbow or something. I was going to ask that just because Monte said you kind of got to be ready for anything goes. Has he got like a mean streak in a good way? I, it's not even a mean streak. He just plays. Oh. He just competes and plays hard. And – I, so I don't. He's he's pretty strong. Some guy and they they laugh at me because I'll go set a screen on him and knock them, and and it's like, uh, I, you know, it's old man strength. Some guys just have that strength, that physicality, and other guys don't. Um, and Casey definitely. I, I don't know if it's old man strength with him, but it's definitely he has he has some strength. Can you knock guys around? Yes, I can. <laughs> and if they are not ready for it, they will get hit pretty hard. One other question on my tape is I appreciate your time. You talk about scoring on the inside. When you look at what my tape yeah. is able to bring to the table right now, can you forecast maybe his development and where he might be most dangerous offensively this time next year? Well, I, I hope that it's in, in the paint. I, you know, I think he just came in where he just wanted to pick and pop and step and shoot the three. Now, like his first basket of game against TCU, it's a post move. And, I mean, he's only done that a couple times all year. It's like, where was this? You know, and a lot of times he doesn't even go in there. That that's And we've been trying to emphasize to go in there, run him and Antonio, run the court, see if we can get a steal a basket, get a basketball play. Um, you know, and if you really think about Dean, where was his progress? He did not want the paint. You know, he he would avoid the pain at all possible. And then, obviously, you get stronger, you get more confident, you know, you develop some game. But I would say that 15 and in where you can rip and go and take people, um, you know, hopefully some post moves uh, along with this, with this shooting. 
guess one last follow-up on Casey. I know that Monte said the one that stood out to him as well is that you know that like every time he comes by the facility, Casey's in here. Yeah. So how much did that make you have a guy coming in? Yeah, I mean, and it's not you know some of it because he's not in the he doesn't travel with us and that we can assign sometimes, but he 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 is putting time in and that's good. And I've talked to him about you know in a way being a leader in the future for himself you know because he is he's intelligent he's a good young man he has great work ethic um and i said it's i'm not asking you to do it now because you're you know redshirting but it, you, you can do it by example what you know obviously if he if monte noticed that then that's a good thing that's a great example that's great leadership um and that's got to continue through monte said he'd never heard the term the freshman wall that's something that you can see with these guys this time again? Oh, he, he, they've, they've hit it. They've all hit it at different times. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, it's, and, and a lot of it's not bas just basketball. It's all of a sudden classes started second semester and then, you know, and then tests start and, and then you got road games and, you know, he came in a couple of weeks ago, a whip puppy, I can tell you that. So it's just, and then, you know, guess what happened in the game? He, he struggled. And, you know, but then he, he's bounced back. That's, that's a good thing. He, he, I thought he came back, played with good energy the other day. Bruce, are you a believer that even the elite of the elite freshmen still have that to some degree? Oh, well, you know, I think that you got to have real special ones. And, and Texas Tech has one. And, but he's still – he's had a game or two where he hasn't. But um, – and that, you know, those – that elite guys, we were talking about how many freshmen have really done well. In our, and Oscars, West Virginia is a, a McDonald's. And, you know, he's been pretty good, but he hasn't yeah. – yeah. Yeah, he's had games where he's six and three or whatever. So uh, – but obviously, the, you know, Texas Tech, he's, he's really been probably the most consistent of everybody. How, how much of that – this is just – I'm curious, I guess. How much of that is just his – yeah, he's he's he just seems to have that strength, that ath that athleticism, and he's a really good basketball player. So when you add that all up, and then you know I, I gotta believe he's been coachable. You know I I know I, I think I mentioned last time I, I was on the plane with Texas Tech's guys this summers when we were on the recruiting circuit, and all they talked about was fighting for their culture. And I talked to Coach Beard the same thing because those young guys don't understand, but. It seems like he has bought in. Um, it seems like he can score anytime he wants, uh, but he's also allowed other people to make plays. And that's a nice thing, Morietti, and for them and Clark, take the ball and and make the right plays. They don't always go. Uh, they they make sure there's there's seems to be some offense. Does Montavious or Antonio Gordon fit that stretch four? Oh yeah, there's no doubt. Either of them better for the stretch four? Uh, well, it, it depends. I guess who shoots it better, but you know, it, right? You know, right now Monte's probably a little better, and he's picked up his shooting. Um, and again, Antonio is going to be like Monte. You got you got a chance now. What do you do with it? Are you are you going to go party on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or are you going to get in the gym? And that's 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 the step when you become special. It's not just when we're we're going to be able to require time, but they're going to have to come in on their own and really take that step. Casey and, and is a great example right now. Do you think uh, once Casey came in, Max production started to go up a little bit? Well, he, he saw he had to practice a lot harder every day. There's no doubt about that. Um, Casey's made a couple guys quit in practice. Um, is that a good thing or not? It's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's bad, oh, yeah. but it's good. <laughs> uh, so we're going to see Luke play tomorrow, Luke Kazuki in St. Louis yes. tomorrow, and then Davion on, on uh, Thursday. Is there anything you'd like me to ask them? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, uh, they, they're they both good young men. I, I, I really, uh, Luke's team has not, it struggled a little more than they had, but that Catholic League in St. Louis is really tough, close games. 
I saw him play the Smed who won it. They beat him in a close game at home, and they lost in a close game on the road um, at the same place. And that's my old player, Kent William, played for me at SIU. the coach there now at the Smed. So it's it's a it's a tough uh, league. CBC has uh, one of the top players in the country going, you know, high level. Um, so and then Davion, um, you know, he's got he's got a ways to go, but he's worked very hard. And when you when I go to practice a couple weeks ago, there he is, footwork, rebounding, all those drills that you need on a daily basis. Hey, Coach, Pearson doesn't play too much, but he's always up and down the bench. You know, every break he's given high he's, five the entire team. He seems like an extension of the coaching staff. I asked Casey, who's been the uh, best leader, and I said, you're, you're just been here, whatever, six weeks or whatever, and he said Pearson. So you can't appreciate so much. He, he's had to play four. He's had to play guard. He's had to play anything we ask every day. He has excitement on the bench. He's excited. He's always talking to the guys. Um, and, he, you know, he's, he's going to be great in life. I mean, you know, there's no doubt he's finishing his, his master's. Um, great family, uh, you know, great drive. Uh, he says he wants to stay in sports, maybe be an AD, maybe be involved like – you know, professional sports administration, something like that. And I, I know he'll be successful. There's no doubt. And we really appreciate him. He seems to be calling out the other team's sets just as much as anyone. Yeah, he's well prepared. He, you know, he, he knows, you know, I mean, he's taken that pride in, in that, you know, being a leader and helping everybody out. And uh, he's he's been he's been great for us. There's no doubt. Celta Miguel going into his final game of the year. Tonight is a huge game. I saw him Sunday, and uh, and he he's got a big game to. If they get first place, then they you know then they got their state tournament coming up for the prep schools, uh, and then they'll have the national championship grind session. But uh, so he can score, and he asked about shooting and things like that. He can score, and and he's pretty physical. He really plays hard. Their whole team plays hard. Do you think the Hoop Summit World Team is, should, should be on the lookout for? I think that would be a good idea, and <laughs> but we'll see what happens. There's a lot of politics in that, but we've been we've been trying to help him, and I know that's one of his goals. And I guess to finish it out, not Nigel Pack. I mean, we talked about all of them. Nigel Pack has had a great season, two almost 20 points per game. Yeah, and Nigel's been really good. Um, and their team is good. They're, you know, they, their rival is Lawrence North. Beat them twice, both close games. They're going to have to play them a third time, you know, if they both take care of business in the state tournament. And I would be surprised whoever wins the game is going to be the state champion in Indiana. So uh, he, great. He's a little feisty for a little guy. Great ball skills. Has a great feel of the game.